also have to show a you know, certain level of perseverance. You are going to have failures. Failures are normal, they are part of the game and they can be very frustrating also when you're working hard and still things are not working out. So my advice is to just to persevere, to keep, keep working on the problem and uh, trying different approaches. And uh, things will work out in the end, one way or another. I'm pretty sure about that. And it's very exciting to be at the end of this moment when things work out. And that's a super rewarding mom moment for, for, for a researcher to be at at that stage. Academia is so full of setbacks and rejections. Everybody is rejected, rejected from conferences, rejected from jobs, rejected from papers. And you've just got to dust yourself off and pick yourself up and get keep going. You know, you have to keep going. There's just, you know, I think everybody you meet who's successful in academia they suffer the same setbacks you know everybody you've just got to believe, keep going i think that self-confidence is just very it takes a long time to build you know to pick yourself up from the dirt and keep going you know there's so much arbitrariness in in academia in terms of you know who succeeds who doesn't succeed who's paper but i think at the end of the day i think what you see is that you can convince people about the worth of what you're doing. You know, you can be successful. You know, people do pay attention eventually. You just have to persevere to catch their attention. Yeah, so that was clearly, I would say, my uh, former supervisor, PhD supervisor, Ted Hench. He basically gave me the possibilities to realize my ideas, to work in a direction that I wanted to re do research in, to support me as a young researcher and but at the same time he was always there when I needed uh, to discuss things with him so I could always come to his office and even if he hadn't thought about that problem before he could immediately you know hit the thing on the spot you know really target say right and contribute precisely to where maybe the problem was and so he had such a has such a great intuitive understanding of physics that it's always wonderful to discuss with him and I think you know this way of doing physics giving this creative freedom to young researchers and at the same time supporting them in their ideas this is something that really inspired me that we're trying to build on also here in, in, in the own, leading the own group now. I think my thesis advisor when I did my doctorate at Yale, who was an economist, a mathematical economist called Truman Bewley, was also very inspiring for me, mostly because he was so critical. He just was critical of everything. You know, he had like any idea you came up with or any seminar you went to, he had 10 reasons why this was a kind of ludicrous idea or a ludicrous thing to do. And I think when I was a student, I found that very difficult to deal with, to start with, but it toughened me up and it made me very critical. Like now, even now I realize when someone tells me an idea, I immediately think of three reasons why that's wrong. And I think that's actually very important because, because you don't want to get into a silo where you kind of accept conventions about what's interesting or what's not interesting. Working with him, I got, I was very close to him personally also, you know, it kind of made me push back on everything. And I think that was very important for me, actually, in defining something original to do that critical, uh, that critical sense.